Hello everyone. So today we are having this course of ROS navigation, which I'll introduce and some basic concepts we'll look at now. So first of all, we are using this robot ignite Academy platform to easily learn about the uh, ROS and it will be really fun using this platform as you'll see now. So uh, let me just uh, go through the whole process very quickly. We are going to uh, see a Jupyter notebook on the left hand side and where we'll learn about the theory and we'll uh, see all these uh, summary and practice exercises, examples etc on this which will help us in applying all the concepts. And on the right hand side, we are seeing the actual uh, ROS platform, which is basically a Linux based uh, platform, which we'll be uh, using. Here we can type commands, whatever we want to. And you will see the simulation up here. So whatever robot you are uh, seeing here will be the actual robot in the real world since we want to uh, reduce our time and don't have a actual robot we can use a simulation instead of it and in between this is the file manager which is there on a linux system which can be controlled through this uh, command window where we can add or remove files which we are going to use so that's the uh, small structure we have where we'll be doing different commands in these windows and noting their uh, responses in the simulation. So let's get started. So here, as we see, we have the summary that we need to give it to us to complete this chapter. There are few more chapters, which you will see down here. So we are starting with basic concepts. The next is a guide for ROS navigation. Then we'll be diving into mapping, localization, path planning. And in the end, we'll be having navigation project. Uh, so for this chapter, we'll be seeing about what is ROS navigation stack. Why, uh, what do I need to work with? this navigation stack and uh, why is it so important and uh, in the end how this ROS navigation takes place using move based node. I hope uh, you know some basics about the ROS and how it works. If you don't uh, please go through the any any course with basic introduction of what is ROS before this video. So let's get started now. Uh, the first question that comes to anybody's mind is why do I need to perform navigation with ROS for any robot? Um, even before uh, you know going through how it is done, let's answer why do we need to do any navigation. For any robot, uh, moving from one point to another is very important thing since it cannot see, it doesn't have human uh, mind, it cannot understand what is an obstacle and what is not an obstacle. So we need to program this navigation to in this robot so that it can uh, navigate and not hit this part if it wants to go from this point to this point plus it needs to find the optimal path in which it saves its time and takes the shortest path so yeah that is why navigation is the most important part of any robot which is moving obviously so we know navigation is important but how do I do it? So the very first thing which we need to do navigation is 
a map obviously so as we are using our mobile devices or our laptops to see uh, google maps or any other map when we have to plan to go to an unknown location for a robot everything is unknown right it doesn't have a very a uh, good mind like a human so it needs a map every time it it needs to know where it wants to go and what are the obstacles which keeps on changing with time so we need a map okay but how how do we get this map so for that we need to get a sensor to make it map for it first of all let's see what this robot is doing to get that map every robot has its own procedure of getting a map but this one which is right in front i can maximize it here so you can see properly this robot platform is called kobuki and this has different sensors on it uh, one of them is called kinect sensor which is right here if you can see yeah this one is the kinect sensor and this one is a lidar sensor using these two sensor it can generate a map of the environment uh, using ir readings so as this robot moves around the sensor uh gives feedback to its memory and generates a good, very good map and now we'll see how it's actually done so to do this map formation we need to launch couple of commands which we'll do right now so the first command which we need to type in is this one so it's called gmapping demo dot launch which we are going to use so we'll copy and paste it here so what it does is it opens a couple of programs uh, which uh, moves which which actually updates the map using g mapping algorithm as the robot moves around and generates a map so next thing is we need to actually move it around so for that we need to do this command so this is a tech key keyboard teleop command which will move this robot with the use of our laptop keyboard or whatever platform you're using keyboard so as you can see here there are a couple of instructions which you can read which will help you in moving this robot around so for moving this robot around we'll need u i o j k l m this and these keys to make it simple we have a little small table which says it moves forward when you press button i and a turn left when you press j and so on so let's try it now um so if i want to move this robot i'll just be on this window and i'll press i it starts moving if i press j it will start rotating and now we can control this robot but wait i cannot see any map so, since i said i'll be having a map now no we need to do one last thing to actually see the map it's called arvis arvis is a platform which we need to use 
to see any kind of an output which is GUI so we launch this using this command there is a particular configuration that we have which we have stored which we have to view the map and let's open this graphical interface So yeah, now we have an actual map. Voila. So we can see this map has been generated, which is not actually a complete map. But since we didn't move around the robot very much, it has not been completed yet. To complete this robot, we need to go to every point which needs to be in its range so that we can see each and every location first and store the whole map in it so we'll try to go to each and every location this part is unknown for us this part is unknown for us so we'll cover all of them to generate the whole map now let's do it Remember, you need to be on this window to, in order to be able to control the actual robot here. So, let's see if we can go to the left part now. Yeah. Let's zoom in a little bit. And since it's so slow, I'll try to increase the speed by pressing Q. Yeah, don't increase it too much, else it will lose its sensing. So basically, we use three things right now. First thing that we used was the this command gmapping demo which specifies what algorithm to use, what uh, method to use to make the map using the sensor reading. The second command that we used was keyboard teleop which moves this robot at various location uh, using the keyboard commands that last thing that we used was the view mapping command which launches a rvis window uh, which uh, in which we can uh, visualize the output which we are getting as a map so our map got a little bigger now as we can see here And these, okay, let's just go back now. So first activity was about how to create a map. And we did it. So what's next then? We have created a map, but we need to localize the robot now. So we need to not only make a map, but as we use our Google map or any other map, we also need to use the location also. Remember, like where exactly are is the person or the robot standing in the map. You need to be very sure about that in order to go from point A to point B. In a sense, you need to find out the point A to plan the path to point B. That is what is called localization. So the next step is actually localizing the robot. We learn about this step in uh, the next video. So we can first practice the mapping part in this video. 
and come back for learning about how to localize the robot in a map.